Dividing New Zealand in two halves is Cook Strait, and at its narrowest part only 12 miles separates the North Island from the South. Looking out over its waters are men of the Tory Channel whaling station searching for whales. All that can be seen at the moment is the ferry steamer Tamahini heading for Wellington. Behind them, just inside Queen Charlotte Sound, is the mothership of the whaling station with whale carcasses floating nearby. From each of these 40 or 50 ton creatures will come up to six tons of oil. Oil valuable in the making of margarine and other foods. All day the men search the strait. New Zealand lies across the path of the whales in their annual migration from the Antarctic and the only gap in a thousand miles is Cook Strait. Whales are air-breathing mammals, so every 15 minutes or so, they have come up to breathe, throwing into the air a telltale column of spray. And thus she blows! They started watching for whales from this hilltop over 120 years ago, and the thrill of the chase has lost none of its excitement. The flag signals action and the mothership gets ready for sea. Then the radio telephone comes into operation. The lookout, the mothership and the whale chasers are all linked. In the bay lie three fast whale chasers and there goes the first of the crews. Another ship is heading out to sea before the chasers are underway, but they will soon pass her. Especially designed for the Cook Strait conditions, these shore-based speedboats are the most efficient whale chasers in the world. The emphasis is on speed, and with a draft of only 30 inches, they skim over the water at 30 knots. Their hulls are light but strong, strong enough to stand the battering of the sea or a blow from a whale's fluke. Now she blows, but the whale sounds before the chasers can get within striking distance. The hunt is on, the sea is wide and the whale no bigger than a wave. All hands ashore and afloat are on the lookout. With speedboats, radio telephone and harpoon guns, the whale has small chance of escaping. It's a far cry from the old days of open whale boats and hand-thrown harpoons. There she is, and the gunner is ready to fire the harpoon with its deadly explosive head. The line has been paid out and more harpoons thrown to make the kill as quickly as possible. Maneuvering the boat calls for good seamanship. It has to move in close yet avoid being capsized. As soon as the whale is dead, compressed air is pumped into the carcass to stop it sinking. This is one more device to make sure that these men get their whale. The mothership comes up to tow the carcass inshore. Most of the whales passing through Cook Strait are humpbacks. And during the months of July and August, this station succeeds in catching about a hundred. Many escape during darkness and stormy weather. At the lookout, another score is notched. Then, searching the seas again from daylight to dark for the whales, following the invisible paths they've traveled for centuries. <laughs> 